This morning I'm going to go over a few topics and the questions are this. What is the name of the wild beast of Revelation 13? Nobody even at, nobody has bothered to even ask. Nobody in Christian circles, nobody in Muslim circles, nobody, nobody. Except me, maybe. I don't know of anybody else. Bible scholars will never ask the question because if you ask the question, you will find the answer. I'm going to give you the answer today. What is the name of the real Moshiach? Or as the Gentiles say, Messiah. Now, I'm going to tell you that the name of the beast is chosen by the Gentiles. And it's because it is a wild beast. It doesn't say just a beast in Revelation 13. It says wild beast. The name of the real Moshiach was chosen by Yehovah, the Abba, the Elohim of Israel. Therefore, he was given a Hebrew name. So, the name of the beast is not Hebrew in origin. The name of the real Moshiach is Hebrew in origin. What's in a name? Does it really matter? Can you escape wrath without the mark of the beast, without his number, or without his name? All right, so we're going to go ahead and start with what happened to my computer. There it is. A lie that Christianity tells everyone. They twisted the words of Paul and remember what, not Peter, but remember what Cephas said about those who twist the words of Paul. They do so like they do every other scripture, and they do so to their own destruction. So the Christians say, and this is from Westmont College, all things exist as created through him and for him, through who? And for who? So they claim, as they say, God the Father's agent in creation, the pre-incarnate. What? Well, carnate means flesh and blood. Incarnate means living but not flesh and blood. That implies the... The spirit realm, or the Ruach realm. But how do you then add pre, since carnate is a descriptive word, incarnate, you're adding a prefix, and then you're adding another prefix behind the prefix. That is incorrect English. There's no such thing as pre-incarnate. So they're saying pre-incarnate Christ was the creator of all that exists based upon what they read in the words of Paul. And remember what Cephas said. They twist the scripture. They are unlearned, they twist the scripture, and they do so to their own destruction. They, they twist the words of Paul and as they do all the other scriptures, and they do so to their own destruction. So, let's go to Colossians 1 and verse 16 and see exactly what Paul said. So, 
So they added, King James people added replaced words, and in doing so, they did so to their own destruction as well. Who is the image of the invisible Elohim, the firstborn of every creature. So when was he first born? <sighs> Let me show you something here. I don't even... Um, did I lose it? I forgot to change this so give me a second here to, oh, what happened? They screwed up my format. All right, let me try this. All right, that's better. I gotta move things around, just give me a second. There we go. Now, I guess I lost it. Hold, where was I? Firstborn. Is it here? No. So what I'm going to do is Google a frame. My firstborn. But a frame was Joseph's son. How could he be firstborn if uh, Joseph was second to the last born of the children of Israel? Huh? How can this be? Okay. Yeah, I don't know how I uh, screwed this up. But anyway. So we'll go to Strong's Concordance and we're going to... This is, this is the New Covenant chapter. Jeremiah 31 is the New Covenant chapter. If you read 31 through 34 verses, you will see that it plainly is. With weeping they will come, and with supplication I will lead them, I will make them walk by the streams of water on a straight path, which they will not stumble. I am Ab to Israel, and Ephraim is my firstborn. Wait a minute, I thought that uh, Yehoshua is the firstborn. Let me show you something here. I may, I may have had it right in here. Okay, I, I had it there all along. All right. So firstborn. The Hebrew word is bekore. The last definition here is the oldest. So it doesn't necessarily have to mean firstborn. Firstborn, firstling, first, firstborn is indeed firstborn, firstling. Remember, the word is bakare. It has more meanings than just one. But here we are with most. Most meaning preeminent. Okay? And you can... Then here's another one. Firstborn of death. What does that mean? Well, Job 18 verse 13 He was talking about his affliction. He called himself the firstborn of death or the becore of death. This is something that the English would not use the word firstborn in. Firstborn of the poor. Same thing. That preeminence of the poor, which means the poorest of the poor. This firstborn of death means the most death of the death. This means the poorest of the poor. See? The poorest. Right here, you'll see it right there with your own two eyes. 
Israel is the firstborn of Jehovah among the Gentiles. So therefore, among Israel, Ephraim is the firstborn of Israel, the preeminent one of Israel, but Yehoshua is preeminent of all creation. When did this preeminence occur? Was it in the beginning? Well, some would like to tell you that, but it's not, not true. Because Paul explains it very clearly in this particular chapter. Now, by who was all created? Well, he is, this was born in the image, or was made in the image of the invisible Elohim. By Jehovah were all things created that were in heaven and that are on earth, visible and invisible. You want to know? I'm going to get there. I'm going to explain this one in just a minute. And it's going to, it's so elementary. You will be shocked and appalled at how deceived your preachers really are. But, so, he is the head of the body, the congregation, the, head, the, the beginning how is he the beginning? Listen carefully. Watch carefully. The firstborn from the dead. The firstborn of the dead who will be alive again. The firstborn of the resurrection of the dead. So... He is made preeminent by being the firstborn of the resurrection of the dead. So that in all things he might have preeminence. First place. Who then, now your preachers say, they twist the words of Paul. Paul said, Jehovah is um, for, uh, he did not say that Jesus, as they say, was the creator and created all things in heaven and earth. It does not say that he, he did not say that. Because he mentions the invisible, not God, not Theos, but Elohim. Proof? Right here. Now the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field which Jehovah, Jehovah is the name of the Abba. Jehovah Elohim had made. You need to be rooted in truth when you speak of these things. Otherwise, remember what Paul, what, what Kephas said. People who are unlearned let me see if I can find it. I don't even know if I need to go down that road. Unlearned and unstable. And once again, that's not Second Peter three sixteen verse seventeen is second Cephas. His name never was Peter. Peter is associated with Deuspiter or Satan. As also in all his epistles, speaking in them of these things. 
This is speaking about Paul, our brother Paul, in which some things hard to be understood by those who are unlearned and unstable, they wrestle, they twist, just like they do all the other scriptures unto their own destruction. And you can plainly read right here that it was Jehovah Elohim, Abba, who created all of these things. So Yehoshua, the son, is going to have, now has, and will be given preeminence once this world is destroyed and the kingdom is set up in Jerusalem, Yehoshua will have preeminence domination over all the creation from the beginning. He will say, who lives or dies? He will say who is resurrected and who is not, or who is um, resurrected unto everlasting life and who is not. Because he will be given that preeminence over everything from the beginning. All right. Now, what is in a name? Does it really matter? Daniel 1, verse 1. In the third year of the reign of Jehoiakim, king of Yehuda, came Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, unto Jerusalem and besieged it. And Adonai gave Jehoiakim, king of Yehuda, into his hand with parts of the vessels of the house of Elohim, which he carried into the land of Shinar, to the house of his, to Nebuchadnezzar's Elohim. And he brought him the vessels into the treasure, treasure house of his, of his false Elohim. And the king spoke unto Ashpenaz, the master of his eunuchs. Master, what, who is the master, master over? Servants, a.k.a. slaves. So therefore, Ashpenaz was the master of the eunuchs, and the eunuchs were the slaves, that he should bring certain of the children of Israel uh, and of the king's royalty, seed, offspring, princes, children whom was no blemish, but well favored and skillful in all wisdom, in cunning and knowledge and understanding, knowledge and thought, and such as had the ability in them to stand in the king's palace, and whom they might teach the learning of the tongue of the Chaldeans. region of South Babylon. The king appointed them a daily provision of the king's meat and of the wine which he drank, so it nourished them three years, and at the end thereof that they might stand before the king. Now among them were the children of Yehuda, namely Daniel, Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah, Azar Azariah. An un to whom the prince of the eunuchs gave names. Oh, he replaced their names, you see. He replaced their names. For he gave unto Daniel the name of Belteshazzar, and unto Hananiah, Shadrach, and to Mishael of Meshach, and to A Azar, Azar, Yah, Azar, Yah, of Abednego. He replaced their names with Chaldean names. 
he replaced their names with the names of Gentiles because he was ruler over them. He had domination and authority over them because, as we read here, Jehovah Elohim and Anoi gave Jehoiakim, king of Yehuda, into the hand of the king of Babylon. So all of Yehuda then became slaves of the king of Babylon. So the master gives the name or replaces the current name. I'll go one even further. And this is a fictional story, by the way. But this one right here, many of you of my age should remember well. Once again, it's a fiction. You know the story of Roots, where the white master tells the slave that he has a new name. It's Toby. But the slave said, my name is Kante Kinte. Now, So, did the one who has preeminence now over all of creation from the beginning, is he going to allow anybody to change the name to whom Jehovah gave him? No. So why is it that you Christians insist on superseding changing the name of the Messiah to another name that is more your liking. Who is the slave and who is the master anyway? Well, according to you Christians, you are the master and he is your slave. Based upon what I showed you right here and right now. So by default then, and this is Gentile Christians, this is Gentiles who have done this, Romans, but not exclusively Romans because you see the name Jesus goes all the way back to the Druids. Jesus Krios goes all the way back to the Druids. The Greeks had Iesous, and it was a false idol. It was before um, anywhere near the, the Roman year 70 AD, as they say. In fact, the English one goes as far back as I believe it was 830 BCE. Almost a thousand years apart. So the Gentiles believe that they are the master over the Messiah. If they are the master over the Messiah, then they are claiming that the Messiah cannot save them. Because if they're greater than him, how can he save them? So, we will now go to the beast that rises out of the sea. Right? And it was given to him to make war with the Kodesh. That was in 70 CE. And he overcame them. And power was given him over all kindreds, tongues, and nations, Gentiles, including the Jews. So Rome decided that they were going to eventually 
centuries later, push their own name, supersede their own name on the name of the Moshiach. Just like they did with Jerusalem. Just like they did with Judea and Samaria. They called the whole place Palestine or Palestina. They placed pre their name preeminence over the name of Judea. So as to erase the name of Israel, Yehuda, and Jerusalem from the vocabulary of men forever. Well, this same Rome did the same thing with the name of Yehoshua. Replaced it with Jesus or Jesus in order to erase the real name of the Messiah from the vocabulary of men forever and ever. Who is the Elo or Elo 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 of this world? Or as they say in English, the God of this world? It is Satan. Who does the majority of this world worship? Jesus. Let me show you something. Largest religion in the world. Christianity is the preeminent religion in the world, and who do they worship? Jesus. So Jesus is the God of this world, which makes him Satan, which makes him the beast. Now, So he calls us all, both great and small, rich and poor, free and bond, to receive a mark, a stamp, in their right hand or side. Dexios means right hand or right side. It does not have to be on the hand itself. On the hand or right hand or right side, but on the right. All right. Now. Or in their forehead. That no man might have the power to buy or sell, save he that has the mark. Or, oh, 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 wait a minute. So he doesn't have to have the mark per se. Or the name of the beast. Wait a minute. It's not just a beast. It is the wild beast. So it is not associated with Israel. Not associated with the Jews. This beast is not associated with the Jews at all. Because wild I'll show you in just a second why that means what it means, why I'm saying what I'm saying, or the number of his name. So either one of these, the name of the beast, or the number that's associated with his name. Now here is he that here is wisdom. Let him that has understanding count the number of the beast, for it is the number of a man. But we see here. It is the number of his name. So the number is in his name. The number is in his name. <laughs> his number is Chi G Stigma. So Chi G Stigma is X E S as we know today.
Stigma. Images. It's not S-E-X, it's X-E-S. X-E-S. And the name associated is X-E-S-U-S. -S. You see, there's a whole lot of people named X-E-S-U-S, but you know what that means. Jesus, or Jesus, or as in English, it is Jesus. Right. Galatian form of Jesus. All right. So that's where X E S is, in fact, the number of the name of Jesus, whom the vast majority of the world worships as their God. Wild beast. All right, name of the wild beast. Therion means wild beast, means not associated with Israel. Properly a wild beast, as opposed to Romans 11. Paul talks about the Romans being a wild olive. All right, we'll go there in just a second here. This is Romans. He's speaking to who? The Romans. If you were cut out of the olive tree, which is wild by nature of a wild olive, as opposed to Israel, they were grafted contrary uh, to nature into a cultivated olive tree. So cultivated is Israel. They are the natural branches. These Israel being the natural branches are going to be grafted back into their own olive tree. This is why it says right here, all Israel shall be saved, which the Gentiles do not believe. I would not, brethren, that you should be ignorant of this mystery, lest you should be wise in your own conceits that partial blindness happened to Israel until the hourglass of the Gentiles fills up. In other words, their time runs out. So who wears the mark of the beast? Not all of these Christians wear the mark of the beast on their right hand, but some of them do. Many Coptic Christians have cross tattoos as a sign of faith on the inside of their right arm at the wrist. You want to see? There you have it. Right there. Right there. And right there. Not only that, One of the forms of the Coptic cross, which is referred to as the Ethiopian Coptic cross, was worn by Stevie Ray Vaughan. Keith Richards also wears an Ethiopian Coptic cross. 
they condemn themselves by wearing the mark of the beast. Yes, it's engraved with a tattoo. It's a sharagma. But you Christians, you don't believe that. You believe it's something else. It's associated with a name, folks. I just showed it to you. I showed you what name it was. But wait a minute. There's more. Cross on forehead. When do they do this? Old Catholics wear the cross on the but not just the Catholics. Okay. They say it's the mark of God on their foreheads, but God or Deus are names of other idols, of the Gentile idols. See, they decided they want to place preeminence of the names of their false idols over Jehovah. making themselves the master and the creator their slave. Do you think that he is going to accept this, that, that mentality? I think not. Christians go to church to pray and have a cross drawn in the ashes on their forehead. On Ash Wednesday. So which Christians do this? Catholics, Lutherans, Moravians, Anglicans, Methodists, Nazarenes, as well as some other churches in the Reformed tradition, including Congregationalists, Continental Reform, Presbyterian churches, also as I have learned, and I, I don't attend these, any of these. So did the Baptists. This covers all the Christians. But wait a minute, hold on. But the Amish don't do that. Are they going to be spared? Let me show you something here. Let us read it again. has the mark, check, or the name of the beast, or the number of his name. So we covered the mark and the number of his name, but the name itself we did not cover yet. Well, we did, but even if you merely have the name of Jesus in your heart as a Savior, you are one of them. All right, let's see. Let's see. Mark of the beast tormented. All right. Revelation 14.11 And the third messenger I should just go ahead and use Strong's Concordance And the third messenger followed the, uh, them, saying with a loud voice, If any man worship the beast, or 
or his image and his mark on his have received a mark on his forehead or in his hand the same shall drink of the wine of the wrath of Jehovah which is poured out without mixture into the cup of his indignation and they will be tormented with fire and brimstone in the presence of the sacred messengers and in the presence of the Lamb. And the smoke of their torment ascends up age long, means age long, and age long. And they have no rest day or night who worship the beast. Now the word and the Greek word for and can also chi can also mean or like besides along with nor and if if nor is in there or is also in there and his image that graven image and whosoever receives the mark of his name or the mark or his name this is what the Kodesh the Jews are patiently waited for. Those that keep the commandments of Jehovah and the faith of Yehoshua. And the Jews will have the faith of Yehoshua once he saves them from the Gentiles. All right. Now, let's see if I covered everything here. So, one excuse that the Gentiles try to use is they say, God has many names. All right. All I have to do is type in, His name shall be one. Oh, His name one. I'm sorry. Not shall be his name one. Okay. It will be in Zechariah fourteen. There it is right here. Zechariah fourteen and verse nine. And we will use Strong's Concordance so you cannot get away from it, so you cannot twist the words of the prophet, not the Lord. Jehovah will be king over all the earth. And in that day, one Jehovah and his name one. His name one checkmate Jehovah does not have many names he only has one name and that name is not God is not Jesus it is not Deus it is not Shiva it is not Allah it is not any of those names you cannot enslave him and supersede a different name a false name on him and he would find that somehow acceptable it cannot be done it is blasphemy and those of you who do this will suffer the great tribulation that's coming upon the Gentiles I just showed this to you You make a practice out of forcing 
your names, forcing your agenda, your false idols, just like Nebuchadnezzar did. And you know what happened to, uh, to the kingdom of Babylon. Jehovah sent the Medes and the Persians to destroy Babylon. And Babylon the Great is going to be destroyed again. And this Babylon the Great is Rome. The one who, just like Nebuchadnezzar, replaced names with their own.